We want to continue our discussion on graphing uh, the sine and the cosine function. Remember what we've covered so far, we learned that on the basic parent function graphs of sine, y equals sine x, y equals cosine x, that something important happens every pi over two radians on the x-axis. You either have a, a high, a middle, or low, a maximum, a minimum, or zero. Uh, we learned that the, 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 the domain of the sine function and cosine function is all real numbers, and the range is from minus 1 to 1. Now, we saw when we plotted the graphs of sine and cosine that uh, at the quadrantal angles, we got negative 1, 0, and 1. So that's where we're getting the high and the low. Uh, now, why, why, why is the range between minus 1 and 1? Again, at the quadrantals, we know we get the highs and the lows. But what about a, an angle that's not a quadrantal? For example... Suppose I had just an angle here, theta, in the first quadrant. Well, we have x, and we have y, and we have r. Well, if I take sine of theta, notice sine of theta is y over r. It's the opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine of theta is x over r, the adjacent over hy the, the hypotenuse. But how do x and y compare to r? Well, r is the length of the hypotenuse. x and y are the length of the legs. x and y are both less than r. So if you take y and divide by r, you're going to be strictly less than 1, and x over r will also be strictly less than 1. Now, if we're in a, another quadrant, we, we saw that sine and cosine p can be negative, but it's going to be bigger than negative 1 on both of those. Right? So at the quadrantals, we get plus or minus 1. At the non-quadrantals, you're going to have a number that's between minus 1 and 1. So that's why the range of sine and cosine is, is from minus 1 to 1. Okay, we're, we're going to do... Um, five different things to the graphs of sine and cosine. You, just like we did before with when we were doing y is x squared or square root of x or absolute value of x, right? Remember, we'd start doing translations on them. So we want to do the exact same thing here. So you already know how this is going to work. Uh, okay, so the first thing is, let's consider graphs of the form a times sine x or a times cosine x. Now, we saw before, if you multiply, several sections ago, if you multiply any function by a constant, that's a vertical stretch or shrink, okay? So it stretches vertically, so it's a vertical stretch or a shrink. So we saw that before. <coughs> now, we're going to assume A isn't 0, <coughs> because if A is 0, you have 0 sine x is 0, and that's just the horizontal line, y equals 0. That's not very uh, interesting. So now, A can be positive or negative. If you take the absolute value of A... We're going to call that the amplitude. So the amplitude is a positive. Amplitude is basically the vertical stretch or shrink. Okay. And we also learned before, if you multiply a function by a negative number, right? So if I have y is x squared, this was several sections ago, and you multiply that by negative 1, what did that do to the graph? It reflected the graph over the x-axis. Okay. Same thing here. So if a is a negative number, you're going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so in the notes, that's the first question. What happens if A is less than zero? That's a reflection about the x-axis. All right, and let's just do an example. It says sketch the graph of y is negative 2 cosine x. Now, as I go, I'm, I always identify uh, what's going on here. So what is the amplitude of this graph going to be? Well, the amplitude is the absolute value of the coefficient being multiplied. Be careful. Don't say it's the number out front. It's a number being multiplied by the trig function. So the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And since the coefficient is negative, we're going to reflect. I'm just going to write reflect, meaning reflect over the x-axis. Okay? So let's sketch the graph. Well, if the amplitude is 2, that means instead of running from negative 1 to 1, our range is negative 2 to 2. And... Every pi over 2, something important is going to happen. <clears throat> and then I usually ask, what does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? On the y-axis, the original cosine graph we saw crossed at 0, 1. We changed the amplitude to 2, and then we reflect it. So that point is going to be right here. Let me do that again. What does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? It crosses at 0, 1, but our, we'd have a stretching factor. Our amplitude is 2, but then we reflect it over the x-axis. So that's where the point is. Now, this is going to be a low. Instead of being a high, it's a low. Well, if that's a low, these are middles, and then these are highs. And then we sketch our graph. 
Again, remember the arrow here doesn't mean go down forever. It means just continue the pattern up and down. Now, in the homework, they're asking for uh, two periods. Notice I've only drawn one period here from high, middle, low, middle, high. From high to high is a period. From low to low is a period. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's how you handle that. Notice I said there are five things we're going to mess with, with compared to the parent graph. We've already done two of them, right? Changing the amplitude and reflecting. So that's two of them. Okay, now let's change something else. We've done a, a vertical stretch. Now we want to look at horizontal stretches. So now let's, we're going to consider B greater than zero here. And we're going to look at y is sine bx or y is cosine bx. Notice now we're multiplying the angle x by a constant, okay? What we just did before, you were multiplying the trig function by the constant. Now what's the change here? When you multiply the angle by a constant, the period winds up being 2 pi over b, okay? Remember the period is the length you need on the x-axis to complete a whole cycle either from high to high, low to low, or other, any other corresponding point. Now, we're, why 2 pi? 2 pi was the original period of the sine and the cosine graphs, the parent graphs. So it's the original period divided by this number b. Okay, let's, and same, for, same for, for both sine and cosine. Okay, let's sketch the following graph. y is negative 5 sine 4x. <clears throat> okay, before I sketch, let me identify everything. So the amplitude is going to be what here? It's the absolute value of the coefficient of sine. So negative 5 is being multiplied by sine, so the amplitude is 5. But what does the negative here tell me? We're going to reflect over the x-axis. <coughs> now, so I refer to this as the number a. Now I'm, so, I'm, assuming, I'm calling this number b. The coefficient of x is b. Now how do we get the period out of this? It's 2 pi divided by that coefficient, 2 pi over 4. And let's simplify to pi over 2. <clears throat> now I'm going to put in an extra calculation here. If you say any of these you know, terms to another teacher, they're going to understand you. This next thing I call pieces, that's something you, a teacher is going to be like, what? You'd have to explain what I mean. Right? So to do my pieces calculation, I'm going to take 1 fourth of the period. Now, that, that whether this is sine or cosine, I'm going to take a fourth of the period. So I get one-fourth times pi over two, a fourth of the period, which is pi over eight. <coughs> okay, so the amplitude is the absolute value of the coefficient of sine x. The negative coefficient means reflect over the x-axis. Take two pi divided by the coefficient of x, which simplifies to pi over two. And you get the pieces, I'm taking a fourth of that. So a fourth of pi over 2 is pi over 8. Now, what, am I, what do I mean by pieces? Let me go back to the original, say, sine graph. Y is sine x. Now, what was the period of that? The period of that, I mean, if you want to use the formula here, there's a 1 coefficient in front of x. That's 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi. We know the period of the original sine graph is 2 pi. Now, if you do the pieces calculation that I just did here, it's one-fourth times the period. But what's a fourth of the period? That's pi over two. So what I'm doing here with the pieces, right? I mean, if you think about the original sine graph, right, the period was two pi. What have I done? I've chopped this interval into four pieces, and that turned out to be pi over two. That's the width of the interval here. So something important happened every pi over two on the original graph. Here's something important is going to happen every pi over 8, okay? So that's what this calculation is for. What's the distance between, on the x-axis, the highs, the middles, and the lows? Okay, so that's what that's telling you. So I didn't need to do that on the previous examples because we didn't change the period. We knew it, there was something important every pi over 2. But now we're changing the period, so something else is going on. Okay, let's see if we can do a rough sketch here. <clears throat> so my amplitude is 5, so my range is from negative 5 to 5. Now notice something important is happening every pi over 8. So if I start at the origin, I need to add pi over 8s. Now, I mean, when I'm sketching these, I'm not always consistent. I need four pieces, right? I need four of these to make up a period. 
So I, sometimes I'll go four pieces to the right or four to the left or three to the right and one to the left, three to the left and one to the right or two to the right and two to the left. It doesn't really matter. Just get your four, four consecutive pieces. Okay, so from zero, I'm going to add a piece. One piece is pi over eight. If I add another piece, it's one pi over eight plus another pi over eight. That's two pi over eight, which is pi over four. If I wanted to go another piece, it's one pi over eight, two pi over eights, three pi over eights. And just for kicks, I'll, I'll go from here. I'm going to go one to the left, which would be at minus pi over eight. Notice I have one, two, three, four pieces, which means that total distance should be the period pi over two. That's, this is a good check. It'll check your arithmetic. From minus pi over eight to three pi over eight is a total distance of four pi over eight, which is pi over two my period. Okay, so that's a good check. All right, so now that we have everything labeled, you ask yourself, what does the original sign graph do on the y-axis. The original sine graph crosses at 0, 0. Now we've reflected, but if you're on the axis already, it's going to stay on the axis. So that point is still here. Now the original sine graph, from the origin, when you went to the right, the graph went up. It increased. But because we've reflected, the graph is going to decrease going to the right. So that's a low, middle, high. So high, middle, low, middle, high. Okay, so let me explain that last part again. Ask yourself, what does the original sign graph do on the y-axis? It crosses at 0, 0. But the original sign graph, when you head to the right, the graph goes up. But since we reflected, this is going to go down. So that's middle, low, middle, high. So then high, middle, low, middle, high. And now we, you can sketch your graph. Okay, so that's the graph of negative 5 sine 4x. Okay, so all the graphing here, it's following a procedure. I'm going to do the same procedure on every single problem. Now, we're, we still have uh, two more things to add. So notice we've changed three things now. The amplitude we've changed, reflection, and period. So those are the three things we've done. Let's do another example like this. The next one is graph y equals 3 cosine of 1 half x. 3 cosine 1 half x. <clears throat> Okay, pause the video for a minute and see if you can identify the amplitude, reflection, the period, and the pieces. See if you can do that. Okay, so let's identify. So the amplitude is the ampl absolute value of the coefficient of cosine. That's 3. Okay, notice there's no reflection here, right? It's not negative 3, so I'm not even going to write reflection. You could write no reflection if you want. Okay, now what about the period? Now, were you careful here? It's 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is 1 half. So 2 pi divided by a half, you invert and multiply the half, and you, oops, and you get 4 pi. So the period here is 4 pi. Be careful. Don't multiply by the half. You have to divide by the half. And then the pieces, which is 1 fourth of the period, turns out to be pi. So it's a trade-off here. In the previous example, computing the period and the pieces was easy, but when we had to do the scaling on the x-axis, we had to deal with fractions. Here you have to deal with the fraction and the period calculation, but then the pieces is easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the sketch here. So uh, the amplitude's 3, so my range is going to be from negative 3 to 3. And then when I start building from 0, we're adding and subtracting the pieces here, pi. So there's no fractions here. So if I'm at 0, if I add a piece, I'm at 1 pi. You add another piece, you're at 2 pi. If I subtract a piece from 0, I'm at minus pi. Subtract another piece, I'm at minus 2 pi. So from 0, you add pieces, which is pi. 1 pi, 2 pi, minus 1 pi, minus 2 pi. Again, I have four intervals, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have four pieces. The total distance from here to here should be one period. From minus 2 pi to 2 pi is the distance of... 4 pi, so I, I'm good. Okay, then once you do this, what's the next question you ask yourself? What does the original cosine graph do on the x-axis? It crosses at 0, 1, but we changed the amplitude to 3, and we didn't reflect, so I'm still at 3. So that's a high, middle here, middle here, low here, low here. 
example, that's a rough sketch of this graph. Y equals three cosine one half X. Now, don't mess up your picture like I'm going to do. It, just having this graph by itself is perfectly fine, but it's nice to know, you know, what did we actually do to the original cosine graph? If we sketch the original cosine graph in here, okay, again, don't ruin your picture. I'm just doing this to show you. So here's one and minus one. The original cosine graph crosses at zero, one. But then as we go to the right, what does the cosine graph do? It crosses at pi over two, hits a low at pi, back at zero, three pi over two, and then a high again. Do, 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 do. Right. So this is the original cosine graph with, that I've done here in black. So notice what we did. We stretched it out vertically, that's what the three did, and then we, it also got stretched horizontally, that's what the half is doing. So you see the blue graph here, three cosine one half x, that function, it, it looks completely different from my original cosine graph that I've drawn in, in black there. Okay. So you can see, when they're side by side like this, you can see what we did, when the, it's just the blue one, it really doesn't really mean, it doesn't mean that much. Okay, so now we've done three things to the graph. Now the fourth thing we're going to do <clears throat> is do a horizontal shift. Now we already talked about this uh, when we were back in the translation section. For example, if I had y is square root of x, I mean, how did you shift the graph left or right? You replaced x with x plus a number or x minus a number. So for example, if I replace x here with x minus two, so it's a different function, what does this, right, how do I get this? I replaced x with x minus two, so that will shift the graph of my root x function to the right two places. It's sort of the opposite of what you think. Okay, So the graph of this function will be a shift to the right two places of this one. Or likewise, what if I had y equals you know, x cubed? What, what would you have to do to this function to get the graph to shift to the left four places? You have to replace x with x plus 4, right? You substitute. The keyword there is substitute. You substitute x with x plus 4. That will shift the graph to the left four places, right? But what if I had y is absolute value of x plus 3x? What if I wanted to shift this, the graph of this function to the right seven places? Everywhere there's an x, you'd replace it. I said right seven, so you have to replace x with x minus seven. And you have to replace every x with that. So that's what we did, you know, several sections ago, the horizontal translations. It's the exact same thing here. Okay, so the example says, consider y is two sine of x minus pi over two. Okay, so think about what graph we, we would have had before. It would have been y is two sine x, right? We, we did examples like this a few minutes ago. Notice how am I getting this graph, or this function? I'm replacing x, substituting x minus two in for x. So this one we already know how to do. This is just gonna be a translation to the left. Oh, sorry, to the right. Okay, so let's identify everything. So the amplitude, well, it's the coefficient, right, of the sine function. Two is being multiplied by sine, the amplitude is two. There's no reflection because the two is positive. Now, what about the period? How do we get the period? It's two pi divided by that number b. Now, where's the number b? It's the coefficient of the angle. Well, there, there's a one here and a one here, right? The coefficient's one. So it's two pi, and then how do we get the pieces? The pieces is one fourth of the period. That's two pi over four, which is pi over two. Okay, so th this is everything we've done before. Again, a little, so the, the, getting the, the B, what I call B, is a little different here. I mean, if, if the problem had been sine of six times X minus pi over five, the period would have been two pi over six. Okay? Or if it had been sine of six X minus something, there's your B, it's still six. Now the book is not gonna be tricky, right? They could do this, right, minus something, right? So the B, if you distributed the two, this would be a six. So it would be two pi over six. The book's not, not doing this. They're doing one of, either one of these. So just be aware, you'd have to multiply to get the six here for the B. But they're not doing that. 
All right, so the only thing left is a horizontal shift. And always tell me how much which way. Well, it's pi, right? We replaced x with x minus pi over 2. So the shift is pi over 2 to the right. Because it's x minus pi over 2, you go to the right. OK? So let's do the sketch here. So the amplitude is 2. So again, our range is negative 2 to 2, no problem. Now here's what you have to do. You have to deal with the horizontal shift first. Now in all these examples, I made the numbers nice so that the shift and the pieces have a nice relationship. Notice my shift here is the same as the pieces, OK? So the book isn't always doing that. I've, I've tried to pick problems where it's nice. Uh, so the shift is double the pieces or half the pieces. I'm not going to make the pieces in my examples. You know, the pieces aren't going to be pi over 5 and the shift is pi over 7. There's not a nice relationship. You'll never get the scale right. Okay, so all my examples I'm doing, the pieces and the shift have a nice relationship. Okay, so here's what you do. Do the shift first. Notice the shift is the, is the same as the pieces. So I'm going to shift to the right pi over 2. Okay, and from there you add or subtract pieces. Notice on the previous examples I was starting at 0 and adding and subtracting pieces. That's because there's no horizontal shift. Now I'm shifting to the right pi over 2. Here is where you add or subtract your pieces. Now again, you, we, as we do examples, I mean, I'm going to keep landing on 0. You may say, well, why don't we just build from 0? Because I'm trying to teach you a general procedure that will work all the time. Okay? If there's not a, if there's not a nice relationship between the pieces and the shift, you're not necessarily going to land on 0. Okay? So do the shift first. From here, add or subtract pieces. So if I'm at pi over 2 and I subtract a piece, I'm back at 0. That's the point I'm making. I'm making it where you're landing on 0. Okay, You're not always going to do that. If I subtract another piece, I'm at minus pi over 2. If I subtract another piece, pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is minus pi. And from here, if I add a piece, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. Now, it looks like what we did before, but I didn't build from 0. I'm building from pi over 2. So I went 1 to the right and 3 to the left. And again, from that's 4 pieces. From minus pi to pi, should be a di it's a distance of 2 pi, which is the period. You should check that. Once you get your 4 pieces, notice it's 5 numbers to get 4 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4. From minus pi to pi is a distance of 2 pi. That's what the period is, so we're good. Now we're ready to uh, sketch our graph. At this, once I get my scaling all done, then I ask myself, what does the original sine graph do on the y-axis? It crosses at 0, 0, but that got shifted to the right pi over 2, so that's here. And on the original graph from there, from here, when I head to the right, I head up, and we didn't reflect. So from here, when I go to the right, I'm going to head up. So that's a high. High, and now I'm going to backtrack to get the rest. High, middle, low. Notice, if, if you didn't know the original equation here, you would think it's just a reflection of the cosine graph. Uh, well, with the amplitude change, right? But notice what we actually did. It's the sine graph. We shifted to the right. And then it starts looking like the cosine graph. Okay. <clears throat> now, before we do the uh, next example, okay. let me go back to... Uh, our substitution example. Okay, so uh, this isn't the next example yet. Okay. What if I had y is 2 sine 3x, say? Right? We know how to do this. There's an amplitude change and there's a period change, but there's no horizontal shift. What if I wanted to shift this, uh, say, to the right pi over uh, 3? Okay, suppose I wanted to shift this graph. So this graph does something. What would the equation look like to shift this graph to the right pi over 3? Well, remember, what would you do? Everywhere there's an x, you replace it with x minus pi over 3, right? That's what you would do. Right? To shift to right, you replace x with x minus pi over 3. Well, if I distributed the 3 here, I get 3x minus pi, don't I? Right, just 3x minus, the 3's cancel here, and you just get pi. Now, do you agree that this is a, exactly the same as that? It's the same function. Okay? Now, be careful. 
how did the graph of this compare to the graph of this? Right? This graph is a shift to the right pi over 3 of this graph. But this is exactly the same as this, which means this is a shift to the right pi over 3 of this graph. Even though there's a pi sitting there. Okay, so that's the point I'm trying to make. Right? How do you recognize the, sh the, the horizontal shift? The coefficient of x here needs to be a 1. So you notice here it's a 3. So if you just looked at this, you might be inclined to say, oh, it's a shift to the right by pi. But it's not, right? How do we get this? We wanted to shift this to the right pi over 3. So I replaced x with x minus pi over 3. So this graph will be a shift to the right pi over 3 of this one. If I distribute the 3, now it looks like this. But it's still this graph. It's a shift to the right pi over 3. So that's misleading. So whenever you see an expression like this, you have to factor the 3 out to be able to identify the horizontal shift. If you don't, you're going to say the shift is pi, and that's wrong. Okay. Oh, and notice I'm, I keep saying horizontal shift because that's what we called it before in the previous sections when we did translations. And for trig functions, they call this the phase shift. So just be aware, a phase shift for a trig function is a horizontal shift. Okay, so with this in mind, let's look at the next example. It says, sketch one period, the graph of 3 cosine of 2x minus pi over 2. Okay. So, the first, now, so, so I've been running through steps. Now we're going to have to add a step at the very beginning. Notice I have a coefficient. There's a horizontal shift clearly, but the coefficient of x here is 2. The horizontal shift is not pi over 2. It's exactly what I was just talking about. You have to factor this 2 out to get the horizontal shift correct. 2 times something. Okay, so that's what you have to do first. So that's the first thing you do. If there's a period change and a horizontal shift, you have to factor out that coefficient to get the shift correct. So obviously there's an x here, right? Now be careful. This 2, that's like 2 over 1. This 2 is in the numerator. This 2 is in the denominator. So you, all right, you can't factor out the 2 and say that's pi just because there's a 2 here and a 2 here. Always check your factoring by remultiplying. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times pi is 2 pi, not pi over 2, so that's not correct. Okay. So whenever you don't have a 2, right? there's no 2 in the num numerator to factor this out. So what do you do? You adjust for it in the denominator. Right? For example, if I had you know, um, you know, pi and I wanted to factor out a 4, well, right? there's no 4 to factor out. So what do you do? You adjust for it in the denominator. 4 times pi over 4, the 4 is canceled. You do get pi. So if there's no co coefficient to factor out, and you want to factor out, you have to adjust for it in the denominator. So there's no 2 in the numerator to factor out, so I have to put an extra 2 in the denominator. 2 times 2 becomes 4. Now again, check yourself. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2, so I'm good. Okay, so whenever you're doing one of these fishy factorings, there's no 2 in the numerator to pull out, so I adjusted for it in the denominator. Check with multiplication to make sure. Okay, now let's do the identifying. So amplitude. So think to yourself, what is the amplitude of this graph going to be? Okay, the correct answer is 3, because 3 is the coefficient of cos the cosine function. Okay, is there a reflection here? And the answer is no, because the 3 is positive, not negative. So I'm not even going to write no reflection. Now what about the period? Okay. So how do we compute the period here? Think to yourself. Okay, it's the original period of the basic cosine graph, 2 pi, and we're dividing by the coefficient of the x, the angle. So if you get the 2 here or the 2 here, you're correct. It's 2 pi over 2, which is pi. <clears throat> and then what's the next thing? I want you to find the pieces. Remember, the pieces is 1 fourth of the period. So this is pi over 4. And then there's one thing left, and what is it? We have a horizontal shift here, a phase shift. And how much, which way? See, if we didn't factor, you'd be inclined to say pi over 2 to the right, but it's not. It's pi over 4 to the right. Okay? So here, if you don't do the factoring, 
you're going to say the shift is pi over 2 to the right, and that's not correct. It's pi over 4. It has to look like this, x minus a number, x plus a number. Okay, so with that, we ought to be able to do the graph. So our amplitude is 3, so our range is negative 3 to 3. And then what's the next step? The next step is you do the horizontal shift. Notice the horizontal shift and the pieces are the same again. So if I shift over, uh, one hard, the shift right is equal to one piece. My point being, I don't have to, I don't have to go way out here, right? You, you can keep the scale reasonable. So if I go pi over 4, here's 0. I'm going pi over 4 to the right. Now from here, from pi over 4, I'm going to add and subtract pieces. Now again, the piece and the shift are the same. So if I subtract a piece, I hit 0. I subtract another piece, I'm at minus pi over 4. Subtract another piece. Well, if I'm at minus pi over 4 and I subtract another pi over 4, I'm at minus 2 pi over 4, which is minus pi over 2. Right, so notice I'm going 3 to the left, let me go 1 to the right from here. Pi over 4 plus another piece, pi over 4 is pi over 2. Again, you're just going to have to practice and get used to doing the fractions. All the graphing here is in radians. Now, if I've done this correctly, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. From minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 is a distance of 2 pi over 2, or pi, and that's what one period is, so I'm good. Okay, so now what do we do? Once you get your scaling, you ask yourself, what does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? It crosses at 0, 1, but we change the amplitude to 3, and we shift it to the right pi over 4. And we didn't reflect, so that shifts to here. That's a high. That's a middle, middle, high, middle, low, middle. There we go. Okay, so that's that graph. Now again, don't mess up your picture, just for kicks, right? Let, let's, let's sketch in what the original cosine graph looks like to see what we've done here. So the original cosine graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 1, right? And then when you move to the right, where's the 0? Remember, on the original cosine graph, something important happens every pi over 2. So the 0 is all the way over here. So that's the middle, that's the high, and then the middle again. So Oops, that's not very good. But you see what's happening. You know, I, I'm basically getting the hump, the hump here. That, that, this is just the hump for the cosine graph. So you see what we've done, right? The original cosine graph compared to what we have for our blue graph, we've stretched it up and squished it in. Because right? one whole period of the blue graph is pi. For the original cosine graph, my black graph, it's 2 pi. So we've squished it in. Okay, so the blue, the blue graph is, is the answer here. Okay. All right, so let, let's sort of review the steps of graphing so far, okay, so for sine and cosine. So first, look at your graph. If there's a period change and a horizontal shift, you may need to factor, okay? So that's the first thing to look at. See if you need to factor. It needs to be number times x plus something or x minus something, okay? If it's 3x minus pi, you know, not three times x, you know, parentheses, three x minus, you have to factor the three out. So that's the first thing. Then you look at the amplitude and the, uh, sorry, the, the amplitude and the reflection, see if there's one of those. Then you compute the period by two pi over b, the coefficient of x, the angle. Then you take a fourth of the period for the pieces, and then you identify the horizontal shift, if any. Then you set up your graph with the scale on the, on the y-axis for your uh, uh, range. Then you do the horizontal shift. Do the shift, then from there, add or subtract your pieces. Again, it's making it look easy because I'm making the pieces and the shift have a nice relationship. Okay, you don't know, from your shifting point, you're not necessarily going to add land back on zero when you add or subtract a piece, so watch out for that. Okay, so now, we, so we've done four of the five things. This one finally has the fifth thing, negative two plus cosine of 3 times quantity x minus pi over 6. All right, now what's different about this problem compared to all the other ones we've done so far? Be careful. The negative 2 is not being multiplied by the cosine. The negative 2 is being added to the cosine. Also, be aware, this is the same thing as putting minus 2 out on the end there, okay? So subtracting 2 here, adding negative 2 here is the same thing. Just be aware of that. Okay? Now what? 
is this doing to the graph? Remember, when we were doing translations before, when we had, you know, the graph of x cubed, right? The graph of x cubed, you should basic cube it, going to the origin. What if we added 5 to that? When you add a number to the function, what does that do to the y value? Whatever the y value here is, you've added 5. That right, translates the graph up 5 units. I know you know this. We did this earlier. Notice that would be the same thing if, if I did 5 plus x cubed, right? The y value was x cubed. I'm adding 5. That translates the graph up. Likewise, what if I did y is x cubed minus 7? Whatever the y value is here, I'm subtracting 7 from it, so that'll move the graph down 7 places. And that would be the same thing as negative 7 plus x cubed, wouldn't it? So when you're doing a vertical translation, you know, people always say, oh, it's at the end. You know, that's a vertical translation. No, it could be at the beginning. Okay? Now be careful. It's just like this one. Negative 2, 2 is not the amplitude. Students will say, well, 2 is up front but it's not being multiplied by the trig function, okay? Okay, so let's do the, let's run through our steps now, okay? Vertical shift is last, okay? So that's why I'm not worried about it just yet. Okay, now first step, do we need to factor for the horizontal shift? No, it's already factored. Notice there's a 1x here, so we're good. So it's already factored, okay? Now let's identify what is the amplitude of this graph? Now, where do you look for the amplitude? It's the coefficient of the trig function. There's a 1 being multiplied by cosine. So the amplitude is 1. Now, is there a reflection? Now, students will, oh, there's a negative sign out front. No, no, no. The coefficient of cosine is positive 1, so there's no reflection. Okay, so let's identify the period. So it's 2 pi, the original period of cosine x divided by the coefficient of x here, which is 3, 2 pi over 3. Now, what about the pieces? The pieces, you take 1 fourth times the period. And a fourth of the period, that's 2 pi over 12. Oops. It's 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. Okay. <clears throat> and we have a horizontal shift of how much, which way, the phase shift, horizontal shift, it's pi over 6 to the right. I think that's the third one I went to the right. Now, what is this telling me here? This is my original function here, right, this, which we've already accounted for. And then what are we doing to the y values? We're subtracting 2. So there's a vertical shift of down 2 because we're adding negative 2. It's like we're subtracting 2. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Now, for me personally, just adding this one extra step is too much. It'll confuse me and I'll mess it up. So I'm going to ignore the vertical shift. I'm going to do everything else just like we've been doing. Then I'm going to do the vertical shift. So I'm going to draw two graphs okay, to do this. I'm going to draw one graph, everything we did before. Then I'm going to do the vertical shift. I highly recommend you do this in two steps. Don't try to be the big math stud. Oh, I can just do it all in one step. Those are the students that always mess it up. I'm telling you from my vast years of experience, okay? All right, so I'm going to ignore the vertical shift and do everything we did before. Oh, but you should plan ahead, right? You know you're going to shift down at the end, so you've got to give yourself some room down at the bottom, okay? Just, you have to plan ahead. Okay, so the amplitude is 1, so my range without the vertical shift is from minus 1 to 1. Okay, I'm going to shift pi over 6 to the right. Notice the shift in the pieces are the same again. I'm being nice. So when I shift pi over 6 to the right, there we go. From your horizontal shift point, add or subtract the pieces. Again, I made it nice. If you subtract a piece, you're at zero. You don't have to land back at zero, but you could. Subtract another piece. I'm at minus pi over 6. Subtract another piece. Minus pi over 6 minus another pi over 6 is minus 2 pi over 6, which is minus pi over 3. And from here, if I add a pi over 6 to pi over 6, I'm at 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. Again, I, I went three pieces to the left and one to the right. I don't care which way you go. I, I could have subtracted one piece and then added three that way. Whatever you want to do. But check yourself. Here's one, two, three, four pieces. 
from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3 is a total distance of 2 pi over 3, which is the period. I got worried I was looking at this. So from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3 is a total distance of 2 pi over 3. That's what we said the period was, so we're good. Okay, but my scale is bad. There we go. That's still not good. Your scale should be fairly consistent here. So, yeah, that was bad. Okay. Now what do we do? Ask yourself, what does your original cosine graph do on the y-axis that crosses a 0, 1? We didn't change the amplitude, we didn't reflect, but we did shift to the right pi over 6. So the original point here comes here. That's a high, that's a middle. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. Okay. Now what is this graph, right? This is the graph of y is cosine of 3 times x minus pi over 6. I've done everything but the vertical shift. Okay, so I'm going to pick a different color here. And if, if you do two graphs like this, you should label the one that you know, right? That This graph is this without the vertical shift. Now, the vertical shift is very easy once you have this rough sketch to go on. Just take all your important points and move them down too, okay? So now we need to add... Okay, notice when I did everything without the vertical shift, I didn't put, I didn't put any tick marks. I just put the, the low and the high. With the vertical shift, you need to add a scale here. So I'm going to go down 2. So be consistent. So this is at negative 2, and that's at negative 3. So this point, I need to move down 2. 1, 2. This point, move down 2. 1, 2. Move down 2. 1, 2. Move down 2. 1, 2. Move down 2. 1, so this graph is going to look like this. And so this is y is negative 2 plus cosine 3 times x minus pi over 6. Label your graphs. And when you do that, look, look if they're consistent, right? The distance between them should be the same, okay? If, if you accidentally put that one here, you'll see it'll be all crooked and it won't look right. So again, I caution you, try not, don't jump to this one right away. You're going to make a mistake. Do it without the vertical shift. Then just take all the important points and move them up or down the appropriate amount. And then label. Don't, if you put them both without a label, how's, how's anybody supposed to know which one's which? Okay, so that's that. Okay. So it looks like we have one more example. And you, if you notice, I put there in parentheses, this problem has everything in it. Has everything. Notice in the previous example, we didn't have a reflection, we didn't have an amplitude change. And the one before that, we didn't have a vertical shift. So this one has everything. Y is 4 minus 2 sine of 2x plus pi. 4 minus 2 sine of 2x plus pi. Okay? You cannot combine the 4 and the 2 to make it a 2. Multiplication, order of operations, multiplication before addition. Okay? So you can't combine those. So pause the video and see if you can do all the identifying. Don't worry about the graph, just see if you can do all the identifying. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing, I, I gave you the hint that there's everything in here. The first thing you need to do is factor this two out, right? Or you're gonna get the horizontal shift wrong, so hopefully you did that first. Let's review the step. First, first step, look in, if there's a horizontal shift, look and see if you need to factor out the coefficient. Here you do. So factor a 2 from 2x, I get x. There's no 2 to factor out from the pi, so you adjust for it by putting it in the denominator. And check your multiplication by remultiplying. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times pi over 2, the 2's cancel, and you get pi. Okay? Now what about the amplitude? The amplitude's the coefficient, the absolute value of the coefficient of the trig function the here, here. The absolute value of 2 is 2. But notice it is a negative 2 coefficient, so there's your reflection. Okay. Now what about the period? The period is 2 pi, the original period of sine, divided by the coefficient of x, which is 2. So we get pi. Now what about the pieces? The pieces is a fourth of the period, which is pi over 4. We have a horizontal shift of how much, which way, if you didn't factor, you're going to say pi, which isn't right. It's pi over 2, and we're adding, so it's to the left. This is our first example to the left. 
And then we have a vertical shift, how much, which way. Be careful, the negative is on the two, that was the reflection. This is, you're adding four to the rest, so it's up four, okay? So again, I'm gonna do everything except for the vertical shift, but we need to plan ahead. At the end, I'm gonna move up four, so I need to give myself some room up here, okay? Um, Okay, so the amplitude is 2. I'm not doing the vertical shift left. Now I'm going to put a scale. I'm going to have to move up 4, so I'm, I'm going to put tick marks here. So the amplitude, so 1, 2, and then minus 1, minus 2. So again, I'm not doing the vertical shift. I'm just doing the, the graph here without the vertical shift. So we're going to run from minus 2 to 2. And then what's next? Now we do the horizontal shift. Now here, let's look carefully. All the examples I did before, the shift and the pieces were the same. Okay, here it's different. How does the shift compare to the pieces, right? Two times pi over four is pi over two. The shift here is double the pieces. So when I shift left pi over two, I need to give myself some room, right? Don't, don't do this on your graph. If I just do like I did before and put a hash mark there, right? A shift is two pieces. So that shift, I'm gonna have to squeeze in another piece and your graph is gonna be too small, okay? So you have to, before, before you start doing the shift, look at the, how the shift compares to the pieces. Before, the shift and the pieces were the same, so if I just went out a little bit, it was fine. But here, the shift is two pieces, so when I shift left pi over two, I'm gonna give myself room for two pieces, okay? The shift could be three pieces, or the shift could be half a piece, right? So you just have to be careful, right? So, but the, because I noticed that, when I shift left pi over two, I know there are two pieces here, so there's another piece halfway in between. So if I add, oh, this is at minus pi over two, if I add pi over, four, pi over 4 to minus pi over 2, I'm going halfway back. That's minus pi over 4. Add another pi over 4, I'm at 0. Add another pi over 4, I'm at pi over 4. Add another pi over 4, I'm at 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. Again, you need to just practice with your fractions. Notice what I did here, as opposed to the other examples. I shifted left pi over 2, and I went four pieces to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. I think that's the first time I've done that. I went two to the right, two to the left, and I did three and one, but this is the first one, I went four to the right. Again, one, two, three, four pieces. From minus pi over two to pi over two is the distance of two pi over two, or pi, which should be my period, and it is. Please check that. Because if you make a little addition mistake, you're gonna catch yourself when you do that. Okay, now what's the next step? Once you get your scale, you ask yourself, what is the original sine graph do on the y-axis that crosses at zero, zero? Now, what did we change here? That, uh, sorry, uh, we again reflected, but this point stays here. And, but we shifted pi over two to the left. So this point is gonna get moved to here. Pi over two to the left. This is why I do that, I do that identifying. Notice I keep looking over here to tell myself what to do, because I didn't remember, right? I had to say the original sine graph crosses at zero, zero, but that got shifted to the left, pi over two. And the original sine graph, right, when you're here and you go to the right, the sine graph goes up. So that would go up except for we reflect it. So instead of going up, I have to go down. So that's middle, this is low, middle, high, middle. I keep missing. Now this is negative two sine two x minus, or x, sorry, x plus pi over two. You can write the original one down too. It doesn't matter x plus pi over two. Okay, notice I didn't, I didn't write the four because I didn't, haven't done the vertical shift. All right, so from here, all we have to do is take the important points, the highest, middles, and lows, and move them up four. I, I may not have planned ahead very well. One, two, three, four. So this is at four and that's at six. Okay, so we're gonna take each of these, well, I can do them blue, all right? Take each of these points and go up four. So this was at zero, so this is at four. This is at zero, oh, sorry, this is at negative two, move up four, it's one, two, three, four here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and four. So this is my final answer. Y is four minus two sine of two x plus pi. Either one of those, same thing. Okay, and again, no, Look and see if the distance between them seems reasonable, right? It should always be a distance of four. So I, I didn't get it crooked, so it looks okay. Now, let, let me pose one last question before we end here, right? 
What is the amplitude of this graph? My final answer. Right? Remember, when I'm writing amplitude here, I'm referring to the final graph. Students will say six, you know, or they'll say four, or something. Remember what the amplitude is. It's the distance. How high are your hills and how low are your valleys when measured from the middle? Students want to go from two to six, the whole distance, right? Remember the amplitude, this is not an asymptote, I'm just drawing this in. See, there's the middle, right? There's where all the, the zeros were. How high is the hill and how low is the valley? That's a distance of two, four to six and two to four, right? The amplitude is two, okay? Just because we shifted up didn't change the amplitude. Now the range changed. The range of the, this before the shift was minus two to two. What's the range of this? Two to six. Notice the amplitude is half of the distance of the range. Two to six is a total distance of four. The amplitude is half of that. Okay, so just be careful. The amplitude 2 is referring to my final graph and this one before the vertical shift. It's how high are the hills and how low are the valleys when you measure from the middle. Okay, there's our sine and cosine graphs.